yet another pistol caliber carbine up on the chopping block. But what makes this one different and why should you care? Well, it runs, first of all, and it may well be unkillable? Stay tuned. What is up guys, my name is John with pptactical.com, your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things that go bang. When it comes to selecting a pistol caliber carbine, it seems like just about every manufacturer you can think of has a 9mm AR style offering that professes to reinvent the wheel with some kind of new game-changing feature. And while that's to be expected considering firearms technology has essentially plateaued, there's likely not going to be any radical departures from existing gun dogma until we get, like, plasma rifles or whatever. There's still something to be said for doubling down on what's arguably one of the most important aspects of functional gun design, and that's reliability. Now, Faxon has cut their teeth on high-quality barrels for a variety of different platforms, and that's essentially the centerpiece inside of Faxon's Bantam 16-inch pistol caliber carbine in 9mm. Most notably, this is the barrel that Iraq veteran 808088 tried to kill with about 5,000 rounds of full-auto fire and couldn't. Although our own testing was nothing near that rigorous, we put this little hitter through its paces, and we're still pretty pleased. You know the drill. If you've handled an AR-15 or an AR-9 before, you're gonna be in pretty familiar territory here. The gun runs on everyone's favorite dumb meme, you guessed it, Glock mags, and we had no issues with feeding or ejection across a variety of different brands of ammo, including the legendarily shitty Winchester Forged, chalky, steel case 9mm that runs so poorly, folks sometimes recommend lubricating the casings themselves in order to facilitate proper function. That's not poetic embellishment at all. For the record, if you're unfamiliar, that specific brand of Winchester 9mm is, is absolute garbage, but the Bantam just chows down on it like a basement-dwelling gun kid inhales rubbery microwave tendies. Weirdly enough, Faxon doesn't really mention any details regarding the trigger, but it does feel quite a bit nicer than your standard mil-spec fare to me. You've got an almost negligible amount of take-up before a nice clean break and a loud audible reset. Again, I'm not entirely sure what exact trigger system is in here, but I like it. The gun is reasonably lightweight as you'd expect, coming in at about 6 pounds or so unloaded. Although we have sort of upped the heft factor on the front end a little bit with the addition of this cloud defensive owl. It's a pretty chunky light, but we are fans. You've got a pretty standard M-Lock handguard with M-Lock attachment points at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions, and QD sling attachment points on the right and left sides of the forwardmost portion of the rail. While we've got a bit of a specialized setup here that features a 16-inch barrel with an integrated muzzle brake, the gun's going to come stock with both an A2-style flash hider, A2 pistol grip, and an old-school LE-style stock. While it's not catastrophic by any means, at a price point of about $950 or so, we would certainly like to see this gun come with maybe a little bit nicer furniture than the incredibly outdated A2 style accessories. In a world in which Magpul CTR and MOE stuff is sort of the base standard that a lot of stock guns come with nowadays, it certainly feels weird to have a sort of higher speed, more modern gun feature stuff that's easily pushing 20 to 30 years old, but obviously that's easily rectified. The gun's also got a skeletonized brass deflector, which sort of feels like putting a racing stripe on a stock Civic, but... Eh. Lastly, the gun's got a specialized magazine release that operates a bit more as a fulcrum than the standard press-in style of the traditional AR-15, and it's also a bit different than the New Frontier Armory or PSA designs that tend to be the norm on PCCs, but it does appear to help with both retention and mag dropping with Glock-style magazines. The gun's bolt also does lock back reliably on an empty mag, a feature that many PCCs choose to bypass, but a functional addition that we find quite useful. Overall, if you're looking to pick up a 9mm rifle in the familiar silhouette of an AR-15, to us it makes sense to grab something that is going to last and really stay with you as you use and abuse it, given that the direct blowback action of PCCs generally just run super dirty. However, you also want something that is actually worth upgrading when the time comes. And for us, the Faxon Bantam 16-inch 9mm PCC ticks both of those boxes pretty nicely, especially if you want a plinky boy that takes Glock mags. 
All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel as we've got lots more on the way. Once again, my name is John with PPU Tactical, and we will see you next time.